The member for Pascoe Vale. Thank you, Acting Speaker. I rise to speak on the Disability and Social Services Regulation Amendment Bill 2023. And in doing so, I do want to acknowledge all the contributions that have been made from all sides of the House in relation to, to this debate. Some very thoughtful, heartfelt contributions, particularly from the member for Greenvale, whom I'd like to acknowledge in that respect. Speaker, Labor has long been committed to supporting and empowering Victorians with a disability. And since 2014, we have continued to work for Victoria to be a national leader in realising the social, economic and civic aspirations of people with a disability. As part of this, Labor has continued to drive outcomes so that people with a disability have full equality, inclusion and participation in our community. This is an essential and crucial part of building a community that is inclusive for all Victorians. However, before I turn to the substance of this bill, I would like to provide some historic context in relation to how we arrived here today. I think it's important to touch on some of the history regarding the abuse, neglect, violence and exploitation that people with disability have experienced in years gone by, which demonstrate how far we have come but still demonstrate how far we have to go. In this respect, I refer the House to page 51 of the Royal Commission into Violence, Abuse, Neglect and Exploitation of People with a Disability, its interim report, which states that, for much of history in the Western world, people with disability have lived on the margins of society, subjected to discrimination, segregation, exclusion and violence. Many 19th and 20th century leaders in Australia joined others globally in attempting to remove defective humans from society. That is basically the practice of eugenics. This occurred largely by segregating people with disability from the wider population and sometimes by sterilising girls with disability. During the 19th and much of the 20th centuries in Australia, many children were born with a disability were taken from their parents and locked away for life in large residential institutions. Adults with disability were sometimes reduced to begging on the streets to stay alive. Adults considered lunatics, a category that did include people with mental health conditions and intellectual disabilities at those times, were sent away to asylums. While the philosophy behind the creation of these institutions was that they would protect people from a life of poverty and exploitation on the streets, in rea reality they were oppressive and people with intellectual, physical and psychosocial disabilities had little to no control over their lives. They typically, typically suffered poor medical and health treatment and poor diets and received minimal education. They were subjected to violence and sexual assault and had no way to report the abuse and seek re redress through the justice system. Women and girls with disability were sometimes sterilised without consent. Through the 1960s and in some cases beyond, people with disability living in the community were also kept out of sight, unable to access many public spaces. Those who were visible were pitted and often mocked and sometimes paraded in circuses as freak shows. A shameful, shameful, horrific history acting speaker, but one that we must never forget because it wasn't actually all that long ago and one that we as parliamentarians must remain mindful of as we continue to consider matters, matters of fairness, equality and inclusivity. However, as outlined in the Royal Commission's interim report, um, through the disability rights movement that began to form globally through the 1970s and 80s, campaigns did begin to change attitudes and practices that contributed to the discrimination of people with a disability. These campaigns led to a series of law reforms, including the development of anti-discrimination laws in Australian states and territories, and the introduction of the landmark Disability Discrimination Act of 1992 by the then Keating Labor government. The key objective of the Disability Discrimination Act, of course, was to eliminate discrimination against people on the grounds of disability and ensure that, as far as practicable, that persons with disabilities have the same rights to equality before the law as the rest of the community. The Disability Discrimination Act, Acting Speaker, was built on the foundations of previous keynote legislation, including the Whitlam Labor Government's Historic Race Discrimination Act of 1975, legislation of historic significance putting Australia on the road to reconciliation with Indigenous people. The Hawke Labor Government's Sex Discrimination Act of 1988, which reflected the commitment to the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women. The establishment of the Human Rights and Equal Opportunity Commission in 1986, again under the leadership of the Hawke Government. Standing on the shoulders of these historic Labor reforms, Acting Speaker, I am proud to say that I continue to be, to be part of a movement that has a very much a long-standing history of taking real action to help the marginalised and, and the most disadvantaged in our community. Even whether it be through recently the Rudd Labor government ratifying the Convention uh, Rights of Persons with a Disability in 2008, the creation of the NDIS under the Rudd-Gillard governments, whether it's through Labor's leadership and unity as we now strive to deliver constitutional recognition for a voice for First Nations people, which will culminate in the referendum later this year, or through this bill, which will continue to improve the treatment of and rights of people with a disability, Labor has always stood on the side of communities who need it most. Although despite these important advances, people with disability in Australia still experience a lot of disadvantage. People with a disability are two times uh, more likely to live in poverty and six times more likely to have poor health outcome, outcomes. However, as highlighted again by the Royal Commission, um, its interim report, 
uh, talks about, basically talks about how a lot of issues are still ongoing. And as outlined in, in one particular uh, piece of work that was submitted previously by the National People with Disabilities and Carer Councils, its report tragically highlighted that for far too long the abuse of children with disability, violence against people with intellectual disability and group homes, in group homes, and the sexual assault of women and men with a disability were far too common. That work reported on human rights violations and the neglect of basic survival needs. Speaker, this bill aligns and responds directly to these key areas of focus by the Royal Commission, uh, some of which I've just touched on, particularly within disability accommodation and tenancy settings. Following the full rollout of the NDIS, the Victorian Government commenced a review of the Victorian Disability Act of 2006 to help ensure Victoria's disability legislation remained contemporary and fit for purpose. It was through this process that various reforms and improvements were identified and are contained in this bill. It forms part of a stage two of the Disability Act review, which will introduce critical amendments to enhance services, safeguards and protections. The main purpose of this bill is to amend the Disability Act of 2006 in relation to the sharing of information about a person with a disability and person subject to restrictive practices, supervised treatment orders and residential services, the compulsory treatment of persons with an intellectual disability, and the bill also seeks to amend the Residential Tenancy Act of 97 to promote residential rights and specialist disability accommodation, the Disability Service Safeguards Act of 2018 in relation to worker screening, the Social Services Regulation Act of 2021 to ensure that it operates effectively to protect safety of social service users. Fundamentally, Acting Speaker, the aim of this bill is to ensure Victoria continue, continues to have a contemporary and modern legislative architecture to complement the ambitious reform agenda that we have previously outlined in Inclusive Victoria State Disability Plan for 2022-2026. This bill, bill is built on the strong and ongoing stakeholder and community consultation that the government has continued to be engaged with, all of whom I acknowledge and thank, including the minister who has led this process and previous ministers who have been involved too. Indeed, this bill complements a suite of commitments that the Andrews Labor government has been delivering to improve the lives and wellbeing of people with a disability across the state, but also across my community of Pascavale, Coburg and Brunswick West. In my community, as outlined by the 2021 ABS census, as well as some work recently by the Marybeck Council in this space, 20% of locals have a disability or even around one in three households. And 18,000 of my local residents provided unpaid assistance to a person with a disability. It's 12.7% of my local population compared to around 11.9% across Australia. Earlier, I referred to the State Disability Plan and I would like to draw the House's attention to section 2.3 of the plan, which specifically outlines the government's commitment around making housing more accessible for people with a disability, including through social housing. Along with this plan, I am delighted at the real action and real investments that we have been delivering to make this aspiration a reality in my electorate through the big housing build project, the Harvest Square project in Brunswick West. Formerly known as Grand Place, which was, a home, which was home to 82 outdated and run-down public housing dwellings, the new Harvest Square project is a groundbreaking $86 million redevelopment proudly being delivered by the Andrews Labor government that will deliver an additional 116 more dwellings overall and consist of a total of 198 new social, community housing and affordable accessible homes, 111 social housing homes and eight community housing homes included in that, and currently it's supporting 770 uh, construction jobs um, as it's under development, uh, which will importantly uh, is a project that makes provision for uh, a certain percentage of fully accessible homes that uh, consistent, uh, are consistent with the Disability Discrimination Order. Act. Order. Uh, the time has come to suspend the House for lunch. Uh, the member may continue on resumption of debate.